Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com. That's still my email. It is still in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms, please reach out to me directly. I am tmasso at thewatchbox.com for pricing. Today, we're discussing a watch that I actually encountered at its launch at Basel World 2016. This is the Elise Norden Marine Chronograph annual calendar. Now, it's not actually the first UN Marine Chronograph annual calendar. That came out in 2003. This is, however, a much more sophisticated timepiece. Do not confuse it with the original. For one thing, it's a manufacturer movement. For another, this watch just has technical capabilities surpassing the original in ways the UN watchmakers of 2003 never could have imagined. We'll get to that in a moment, but first, size and fit. In red gold, it's 43 millimeters in diameter by 15 millimeters thick from lug tip to lug tip, a nice even 50 millimeters. We'll throw it on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference. UN has an unusual method of articulating its straps, hybridizing them with bracelet components. You can see that there are actually three pivot points right here. So when I throw this large watch on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it does fill out my wrist. And you can see that from edge to edge down the barrel as well as over the top. And then in profile, while it's not super thick, it does have quite a bit of an outcropping or an overhang, so it'll fit under a jacket cuff, but probably not tight dress sleeves. That's okay, now, this is a sporty gold watch. Taking a quick look at how it fits, it's super secure, but because of its physical size and imposing appearance, I would recommend you not wear it on a wrist smaller than mine, and once again, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference. The watch is heavy, and it should be. It's expensive and upscale. The strap integrates with Ulysse Norden's quirky and long-running extended lug profile, and you can see it as a hinge arrangement where the strap is held to the case with screws and bars, which is a great way of fixing a strap to a case as it's less likely to let go than spring bars. We have a lovely little satin finished double jointed UN logo that doubles as a link. And then the strap has a wonderful vulcanized rubber quality of being impregnated with natural vanilla during the manufacturing process. Some companies that do natural vulcanized rubber straps do add the aroma of vanilla to their straps. UN does that. When I open up the UN drawer in our safe, I'm just overwhelmed by it. It's a wonderful, luxurious aroma, and I always appreciate that little attention to detail. Taking a look, you can see this is a strap designed to be cut to length, so there are many pre-scored marks on the bottom. And then you've actually got two anchoring points. See how there are two perforations, two sets of divots on each side? You've actually got a third. So you can actually set the anchoring point here and decide where you want to put the strap inside the clasp for fine-tuning the fit. Now we've got a titanium double swing arm action here. It is a sequential close, so one side closes before the other. UN logo externally, all set and finished. We have twin trigger release. So you have to press the triggers to open it. It will not pop open inadvertently. Being a sports watch designed for active lifestyles, that's admirable. Now it does have a screw down crown and this watch does have a 100 meter water resistance. And that's a pretty stiff and reliable 100 due to the screw down crown. So yes, swimming approved. The bezel has a little bit of a coining profile and the case has a beautifully lacquered and satinated blued screw fixed number plate. And so the shape of the case with this negative tumble home, the bolt fixed plaque, and the coined bezel, all designed to evoke the marine chronometers built famously by Ulysse Norden during the 19th century and early 20th century. They were famous for these deck navigation clocks made for ships at sea. And some of the imagery of their marine chronometers finds its way into the marine line. And this is the marine chronograph annual calendar. We have a rubber shoulder on the screw down crown. We have rubber pads on the chronograph pushers. And you can see there's a contrast here between various satinated and polished elements, which is much appreciated. It's an artful touch. The dial is not white or silvered, but cream in color for a gentle contrast with the red gold. We have blackened, stylized marine chronometer and style inspired hands right here. And 
In addition to marine chronometer-inspired hands, we have radially arrayed Roman numerals, including a watchmaker, clockmakers four right there. There's a rejo outboard that acts as a flange uniting the bezel with the dial base. You can see that there's a polished chapter ring around the aperture for the date, and that the date has a little integral cyclops eye magnifier, but unlike Rolex, it's on the underside of the crystal, so it doesn't have any danger of being removed by impact, nor does it look like a wart on your watch. We have sub-registers with a very gentle concentric pattern internally. And then we have an indicator that's coaxial over at 9 o'clock featuring the month of the year and the running seconds. And this is how this works. You can see that the, the months, the numerals, the Arabic numerals on the sub-registers, they're all radially arrayed. Ulysse Norden is based out of Le Loque, Switzerland. And it was founded in 1846, which is what that number is for. Now you can see I have a hacking or stop seconds function here so I can stop the watch and set it to a reference time. I also have a bi-directional quick set for the date. Note the date drives the month indicator. This is an annual calendar, which means it only needs to be corrected once annually during the jump from February to March. Otherwise, you're good to go. Now flipping it all over, we have a version of the Ulysse Norden Caliber 150, which once upon a time was the Le Mania 1340, and after that, it was the Abel 137, eventually becoming the Ulysse Norden 150 by acquisition and redevelopment. And this is the UN 153 version of it with an extraordinary 22 carat multiply finished rotor. There's polish, there's satination, there's mirror beveling, there's this lovely brutalization of the surface. We have this roughage pattern, which is gorgeous, a uh, tortured surfacing that makes each one of these rotors individual and unique. You could see that the rotor, as well as the bearing, as well as the bridges and the functional components of the chronograph, fixed by fire-blued screws. All of this with a 52-hour power reserve and a 4 hertz beat rate. You could see up at the top that it is a cam-driven oscillating pinion chronograph, so it's a little bit different from a conventional lateral clutch. You can see right here we have this oscillating pinion that comes into contact, and the idea there being that with very little play in an oscillating pinion, it gives you the beauty of a traditional lateral clutch with the largely seamless engagement of a vertical clutch. And you can also see that the movement's been redeveloped by Ulysse Norden for fine finish, a handsome architecture, a full balance bridge, and a free-sprung balance. And so these features make it a lot more durable, the free-sprung balance and the full balance bridge. Plus, there is a recessed bolt aerodynamic free-sprung balance, and Ulysse Norden, perhaps uniquely among companies of this size, has a subsidiary, Sigatech, that it's owned since 2006 that makes all of its silicon in-house. So we have an unlubricated anti-magnetic silicon escapement that improves precision, extends power reserve, and reduces maintenance requirements. But we also have an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring of UN's own fabrication. And then you can see there are ceramic rotor bearings which help to improve the efficiency of the winding system. All of this pivoting on 53 joules. And you can see it as a bi-directional magic lever style, super efficient pole-based winding system. So much to love with this watch. And if you love it, please reach out to me. I am T. Masso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.